3.30, seem to be uh, few in number today. Maybe we'll have a, have a few trickle in. Uh, any uh, questions on the, the lab or linked lists in general or Java stuff that has uh, come up? All right, I wanted to talk about one thing that came up uh, in lab hours a few times last night, so I thought it might be helpful to, for everyone to, uh, to hear it. Um, and that is taking a look at how this list node constructor works uh, whenever we're writing a, a method in our doubly linked list class that is going to make a new node. We're going to say uh, kind of new list node, uh, and we're going to give it a, a, a value, and then we're going to give it nodes that should come before and after uh, uh, the, the new node that's being inserted. And if we take a step back from the code and do what many of you have suggested uh, uh, doing on the check-in form, where uh, we draw ourselves a picture and let's assume that we have some previous node and uh, a node that comes after that, maybe previous has A, the one after has B, and we're going to put in some arrows. The node before has the next arrow here. The node after previous back, and previous and next, and so on. And so if we want to insert a new node that has some new value in it, if we want to insert it between these two, we need to change up some of these arrows to make that work. So we'll call this one new node. What's one arrow that we need to change to put this in between these two? Yeah, sorry. Your previous no, next would be pointing to the new node. Exactly. We want this next to be pointing down here to the new node. We need some line of, of Java code like this. What's another arrow we need to change? Ben? New node.next to point to the old one that was previous on next. Uh, if this was the old previous.next. So if we have previous, before we insert this new one, previous.next is here. And maybe we'd want to do this one before we change what previous.next is, if we want to use its old value, have it, have it do something like that. Uh, and so that's our new nodes next going over there. How about another arrow? Yeah, Paul. Your previous dot next dot pre is the point to name node. Yeah, so let's move this changing previous dot next down. <clears throat> dot next that gets us here dot pre it's arrow going back that needs to be our new node so we can all right this previous to go down to the new node is there one more one more arrow we need to change
Especially. The new node dot previous. Exactly. And what would we want new node dot previous to be? Exactly. All right, I want to change, make those four arrows, like change them to include our new node in the list. Do these four steps make sense? Questions on these? And so apart from walking through what are the arrows we need to change, the reason that I bring this up is to call your attention to what this list node constructor is doing in terms of managing these arrows. So our inside this constructor, we can change the new nodes previous and next. And the constructor uh, does that, says that, all right, our previous, our prev for our new node is going to be what whatever node should come before. So that's taking care of this previous arrow. It's going to say our new nodes next should point to the node that comes after. That's this one here. But then after this, we say, OK, if the thing before exists, if it's not null, change before dot next to be this. And in Java, the special keyword this refers to the current object. If you remember self from Python, this is Java's version of self inside of a class. So, we're, so that's doing this previous uh, dot next is the new node. It's saying, OK, the node before is dot next equals our new node. And similarly, if there is a node after it that we're trying to add and it's not null, after is dot previous, previous dot next dot previous will also be the new node. So this list node constructor takes care of all four of these steps. It sets up all four of the arrows we needed to change. And if we then want to use that and say this insert after, it actually makes writing this insert after method really, uh, really short because we can say, give me a new list node with this starting value. The thing that should come before it, because we're inserting after this node called previous, the thing that should come before it is previous. The thing that should come after it, previous.next. And as part of this constructor, we set up all these arrows. We set up all the previous.next for both the new node and its neighbors. And so we don't actually need any more code in this insert after to do these four steps, because these four steps are part of this list node constructor. Other thing we might consider doing an insert after is adding one to our count of how many nodes are in the list since we just put a new one in there. Does that make sense? Any questions on this? All right, so let's do, sorry, is there a question? Uh, let's do some more practice with uh, choosing which data structure we would use in a particular situation. Uh, and so, all right, none of it. Uh, and so our choices are going to be our fixed size array, our array list, our extensible, our flexible array, our singly linked list, which just has the next 
but not the previous, and a doubly linked list which has our next and our previous. So in this situation we are rolling an eight-sided die to choose a random color of a program that's maybe implementing some kind of board game. All right. Votes for A, B, and C. Please discuss with your neighbors why you would choose a particular one of these four options. All right, we're converging on an array. I would agree with the majority here. Uh, anyone want to share a, a reason you think an array could be a good choice here? Liam? Well, you know it has to be one of eight possible colors, so you would have an array of eight and you can just reference uh, each index pretty easily. Yeah, Liam hits on, on the two key points here. We know exactly how many things should be in this data structure. So a fixed size array seems like it would be helpful there. And we're randomly choosing one of these things. So a data structure with efficient random access, being able to jump to any index, is going to, to be a good choice. And we've seen how for a linked list, it's actually linear to jump to a particular index because we have to follow all the, all the nexts. So something like an array where we can just jump to an index makes sense here. Questions on that? All right, next scenario. What if the die can have a variable number of sides? It's not just an eight-sided die. It's a we're going to change the number of sides on the die over time. All right, some thinking link list, some thinking array list. Please, uh, uh, discussion with your neighbors why you would choose one of these options. All right, singly linked list. Uh, not as popular. I'm again going to agree with the majority that I would probably use an array list for this. Uh, anyone care to make the argument for an array list? Therapy? How much of this helpful? Like the way that I think of an array list is just obviously it's like it could it could either be ever expanding or shrinking. I think like the best real life example would be like the subscriber count on YouTube. <coughs> well, I could not take this either. I would go up and down. And in this case. Because the number of sides is always, I guess, going random. You want something that could have a random access, but also be flexible enough. Yeah, I think that's that's nicely put. That we still want to have good random access. This is still our, our random die, but now we want to be able to change how many how many things are in it. Uh, Anyone care to make the, the case for the, the doubly linked list? I think there, there might be one. Hey, yeah. I suppose if it's variable, you could also be like subtracting like a side from it, and if you wanted to take something out, it'd be easier than using an array list, if it like has to be in a specific order, I guess. Yeah, we, we know that for some kinds of like removing from the middle or the beginning on array list uh, is less efficient. So if it were the case that we were changing the number of sides far more often than we were rolling the die and having to choose a random entry, then the balance is, well, maybe we want the changing of like removing something uh, from anywhere inside it might become important. But it would be pretty strange to like be changing the die more often than we were rolling it. Uh, so that doesn't seem that likely, but uh, there is kind of a trade-off between those two things. Questions on that? Now we want to represent a line of customers waiting to be served in a first-come, first-serve order. I'm going to keep track of these customers who, and, and their place in line. All right, lots for singly linked lists, some for the rest. Again, make your case to your neighbors. How would you make this decision and why? 
All right, I think that uh, there is a, maybe not a strong reason, but some reason to prefer a, a, a singly linked uh, list in this situation. Uh, can I get a, a, a volunteer to share how you thought about this question? Ron? Uh, you're, like quite often you're adding new members to the list and you only really care about it in one direction because you only care about the customer that is about to receive the order instead of whoever's at the back of the line. Yeah, exactly. That We have a situation where we're only ever adding to the end and, and removing from the beginning of this line. And if that's all, if we're only adding to the end and the only place we remove from the beginning, then a singly linked list that doesn't have these previous, uh, all these previous arrows uh, is going to work just fine. Elena? Could be a list if you were like adding customers like with it or could just add it to the end? Uh, yes. Uh, that's a, a fair point that for an array list, adding customers to the end works great. Uh, removing customers from the beginning, we have to shift everything over. Um, so it's the removing from the beginning part that is what the array list is not, not going to let us do as efficiently. Liam? Um, I'm so unclear the advantage or disadvantage between choosing a single versus double array list. So this is something that was in the, uh, the notes and, and reading that we didn't uh, uh, really get to in class, which is one reason why it's, it's coming up today. Make sure we, we talk about it. But uh, the single versus double is an example of of a memory, uh, I think I would actually say memory performance trade-off. And that is to say, when we go from a single link to a double link, when we add that previous to each of the nodes in our list. Uh, that uses more memory. That we have to store these previous arrows for all of our nodes instead of just the next arrow. That is going to use more of the computer's memory. But what we get for that is we can perform uh, removing from anywhere besides the very front. We can perform that more efficiently. Because when we remove something for, from a linked list, we want to have the, the thing before it kind of skip over that node with its next. But that means if we... So we've added this new node in here and now we want to remove it. We want the previous next to kind of skip over the new node. But that means that if we have this new node, the way that we find its previous one is with this previous arrow. If we didn't have this previous one, the only way to get this previous one is to search all the way through our list until right before the node we're at. So having this previous arrow lets us immediately find the thing before us to have it skip over the node we're removing. And so that's what our doubly linked list is. Uh, it's using more memory, but it's making some operations more efficient. But in the case where we don't need those more efficient operations, where we're not removing from anywhere but the front, we it's not... Uh, so now it's no longer worth it to use more memory for a benefit that doesn't that we're not going to be able to make use of. Right. So since an array has random access, like there's random access, like 
In order to find the previous in uh, linguals, you need to know the value or... Uh, <clears throat> you mean in a, in a single A linked list? Um, in a double A. Uh, in a double A linked list, if we're at a particular node, we have its prev, its previous arrow, to find the thing before it. Right, so if, like, I guess, like, what I'm trying to, like, see is, like, because it seems like if you know the value of one thing, you can just randomly access the index of that value and then just immediately get to the, the index, like, minus one. Uh, that would certainly be true in an array. Uh, in order to get to the index minus one in a linked list, we have to start at the beginning and count index, like follow index minus one next arrows in order to get to that spot in the linked list. There's no kind of jumping just straight to a, a particular spot. Is, okay. is, that, is that what you're asking? I'm not sure I Maybe understand. I missed, were you saying that, were you comparing like singly linked lists to doubly linked lists? Okay, sorry, I thought you were comparing arrays. So. Ah, no, no, I was comparing the, the two different kinds of linked lists. Sorry. Do arrays use less memory than linked lists? Uh, yes, that's true. That for an array, we just store the value at each spot. For a linked list, we store the value and a next and maybe also a previous for everything in our, in our list. So linked lists do use a, uh, somewhat more memory for that reason. All right. So speaking of... Uh, uh, customer is waiting in line. There's, uh, that brings me to the topic for today. Which is, we have two uh, new, exciting, uh, useful data structures uh, to, to add to our growing collection. Uh, We have the stack, and we have the queue. And one uh, uh, point that I, I want to, or dis, uh, distinction that I want to introduce here uh, is that uh, up until this point, we've been thinking uh, of kind of a data structure and its sort of logical behavior and a data structure in how it's actually implemented in Java as pretty intertwined. Then when we talk about an array list, that specifically means like a list implemented using this, using an array. Or we say a linked list, we're saying a list that's implemented as the, this linked chain of nodes. For stack and queue, I'm going to treat these as abstract data types, which is going to is going to separate the logical behavior of this data structure from what we do to actually implement in Java this behavior. So I'm going to start with the logical behavior of this of a stack and a queue and why they're useful and why we care about them. And then we'll think about, okay, how do we actually make that happen? The implementation. So a stack we can think of it as literally representing a stack of things. What can we do with a stack of things? We can put something on the top, and we can take something off the top. Like if there's a big stack of trays in the cafeteria, we are going to take a tray off the top. We're not going to lift a bunch of trays out of the way to try and take one 
out of the bottom or the middle. So stack, we kind of add or remove things from the top. So we we add to the top and we remove from the top. And adding to the top and removing from the top of a stack get special names. When we add something to the top of the stack, that's usually called pushing that thing onto the top of the stack. And when we remove something from the top, that's often called popping something off the top of the stack. We can think of a queue in contrast as uh, like that line of customers. We we add things to the end of the queue. And we remove from the beginning of the queue. And the result of these behaviors is that our stack is a uh, Last in, first out, LIFO. Where we add five things, we push five things onto the top of our stack. The last one that we pushed on, that's the one that's going to be on top and is going to be the first one to be removed. And you think you have a, a stack of books. You add books on top. The most recent book you added that's on top is the one that you would take off first. So our stacks are going to have this last in, first out behavior. Q. Our FIFO. First in, first, out. You would expect if you're the first one to get in line, you're the first one to get out of the line. You're at the front of the line, first one to, to get a turn. Questions on, on this so far? These two, these two ideas of a stack and a queue? Sir, what are the methods for adding and removing stuff on the queue? Yeah, so do these have, does add and remove have special names? Uh, in Java, they are called add and remove. So I will use add and, and remove. Uh, in other contexts, I will uh, uh, avoid these. Uh, I, I don't think that they're uh, that helpful, but add is sometimes talk called NQ, and remove is sometimes called DQ. We NQ when we put get in line, we DQ when we get out of line. But I'm going to use add and remove. Other questions? Yes, sir. Are there limits to um, that's an excellent question, uh, and I would call your attention to uh, that would be an implementation detail. The kind of the logical behavior of the stack and queue doesn't say anything about whether there is a limit or not. It just says we have a structure; it can have stuff in it. And it's either last in, first out with this push and pop, or it's 
first in, first out, like a queue. And based on how we implement it, there could be a, a limit or, or we could do it with something that, that's flexible. All right, so why do we care about stacks and queues? What, uh, uh, what are the, the applications of these sort of uh, data structures? So a queue may be a little easier to see. Uh, anytime we're, we're representing uh, uh, some sort of, of line, like uh, first 100 customers are going to get 20% off. We care about the order people showed up in, and so we want sort of first in, first out. If we are uh, simulating something in the real world, like traffic, kind of cars are in a line and the, the first car uh, to get on the road and the first car to get off it at the end. Or if we're uh, simu uh, uh, simulating sound waves, um, uh, we might also uh, uh, use something like a queue as kind of the frequencies repeat and kind of cycle through in a first in, first out. Would this be more of a thing than like the singly linked list we talked about with the queue? Uh, so uh, another another good question that uh, how does a queue relate to our singly or double double A linked list? So as we'll see in a moment, we might actually choose among, say, array, array list, singly linked list, or doubly linked list to implement our abstract data type of a queue. Um, and as, as you suggest, a singly linked list, if all we want to do is add to the end and remove from the beginning, as we've talked about, like that uh, might be a good choice for how to actually implement our queue. Um, why would we, uh, there are also a, a number of instances where a queue shows up in, in how a computer system is working underneath. Uh, so uh, if kind of data is coming in from, from the internet or being uh, uh, read from a file, uh, it's coming in in kind of chunks and Inside the computer system, those chunks are going into a queue so that whatever program is receiving that data from the internet or that is reading that file can then get them out of the queue in the order that they showed up in. Stacks are useful for uh, uh, kind of the internals of computer systems as well. Uh, they're used for interpreters and compilers. They're used to manage memory and function calls. Uh, and you'll hear a whole lot about that uh, if you take CS208 or CS251, Introduction to Computer Systems or Programming Languages. But there's another thing that we interact with uh, uh, very frequently um, that operates like a, like a stack on a computer. So if we think about are a web browser and we go to a page and then I say go to the calendar page and go to the notes for today. I've actually formed a stack of the pages I visited. The page I'm on is at the top and if I hit the back button in my web browser it's like I'm taking the top page off of this stack and going to the one that's underneath it. So I swarmed this, so I hit back, popped off my stacks and queues notes, now I'm back to the calendar. If I hit back again, uh, that gets popped off the stack and I'm back to the 201 homepage. And so this sort of web browsing has this last in, first out behavior. Shoka? Does that mean that you can like hook back the stuff that you move, like the same one? Yeah, if, if what I'm removed are, are stored somewhere else, I could put them back on the stack. And my Google Chrome does that. I, I've gone back several times and now I can go forward. I can push those 
pages back onto the stack and end up back at where I started. What other questions do you have? I saw some, some hands up. Sir? Would life in Gmail be a stack then? Uh, depend, I guess it probably depends on what part of, of Gmail we're, we're talking about. Uh, Gmail is often sorting messages by the time, emails by the kind of time that they came in. And so anything that ends up sort of the first thing that, um, so as messages are arriving, they probably go into a queue and then they're taken out of the queue to be displayed in the email. Um, but it is sort of displaying the most recent one first. Um, but I would say it doesn't have this behavior where we can only see the most recent message. Right? If, if Gmail was like, you have to read the most recent message before you can like remove it from the stack and see the next message underneath it, uh, that would be super annoying. So I'm, I'm glad that Gmail is not, not a stack in that way. Other questions? All right, so want to talk about, uh, go through a, a quick example of how uh, uh, stacks and queues uh, would behave, and then we'll get to this implementation question. Uh, so if uh, I have my stack, and my Q, and I say, uh, I'll say that this is my, uh, uh, I'll call the stack uh, S, I'll call the Q, Q, <clears throat> and I might say S push the string for Q, add the string four. I push uh, uh, my string four, shows up in the stack, add the Q, we have four in there. And then push a couple more strings, uh, push score and add score to the queue. So when I push onto the stack, my uh, next data kind of shows up on top of the previous one. And in the queue, it shows up kind of next in line. If I did S dot pop at this point, pop something off to my stack, would I get a score or four? Score. Yeah, I would I would pop off and this would return the thing on top of the stack, score. Whereas if I did dot remove when I get four or score. Yeah, I would get four, I get the thing at the front of the queue. And if I did pop uh, with stack now, I get four. If I did remove from the queue again, I would get score. So one thing to notice about this example is that the order that I got things off of the stack was the reverse of the order I put them in. I put four and then score, but I got them back popping off in the other order. Score and then four. Whereas with the queue, I got them out in the same order I put them in. And so this last in, first out behavior of stacks have this effect of we get things out of them in the reverse order of how we put them in. 
Questions on this example? Anything not making sense? Okay. You do stuff like a stop fault like equals equals or like if a stop fault equals equals something. Yes, absolutely. Like, could we use s dot pop as part of some larger expression, such as s dot pop equals something? We absolutely could. Uh, in this example, if we wanted to check whether two strings are equal, reminder that we have to use dot equals uh, in Java. But yes, we could use s dot pop and as part of some uh, some larger thing. Jeffrey, but if you use it, though, it wouldn't be in the stack of Q anymore. Though. That's right. If we when we call s dot pop, even if we're just calling it to check if the top equals something, it will still remove it from our stack. Uh, and so I've only talked about push and pop or add and remove, but you could imagine uh, a stack method called peak, which doesn't remove the top, but just returns what that current top value is. So we can check what's on the top without actually removing it. Is there a way to check what's underneath the stack? Uh, so in this kind of logical behavior, uh, there's it, you can have a stack where there is no way to check what's underneath the top thing. Uh, that said, there may be implementations of the stack that do provide that. It's just not kind of a required part of logically being a stack. Other questions? All right. So before we get to implementation, we've got to get to James Buchanan, 15th president of the United States. Uh, his nickname was Old Public Functionary, which, I don't know, it's not a nickname I would be thrilled about. Uh, uh, one of our, our uh, the United States rare uh, lifelong bachelor presidents, um, one big part of, of why James Buchanan got the presidential nomination is that he had been uh, a diplomat in uh, the United Kingdom and kind of for the uh, for a number of years prior to this uh, uh, election of, of 1856 and so he was sort of uh, aloof from uh, the the bitter uh, controversy and, and argument over slavery in the country and so he was seen as maybe a unifying figure, uh, really did not turn out to be that way. He turned out to be quite pro-slavery, uh, intervened uh, in the Supreme Court Dred Scott decision, which is often considered uh, the Supreme Court's worst opinion it's ever uh, uh, issued, saying that uh, uh, slaves were not uh, citizens under the Constitution. Uh, he tried to get Kansas admitted as a, a slave state, uh, which was uh, angered a lot of his supporters. Uh, and then when Abraham Lincoln was elected in, in 1860, uh, Buchanan was just completely ineffective uh, at dealing with the looming uh, secession uh, of southern states. And so he is very consistently considered among the worst, if not the worst, uh, president in, in history. Uh, so uh, a, an example not, not, to be, not to be emulated. Uh, all right, back to stacks and queues. So what I'd uh, like for you, uh, uh, you to do now is I have here a chart uh, from the linked list to uh, notes uh, that talks about uh, a number of the different uh, operations, the different methods that we would have in these class uh, with, the, with these data structures. Uh, and uh, notes whether this operation would be constant uh, or linear, similar to the, the analysis that we did uh, earlier in the week. And so, as I, as I alluded to, we could use an array list or a singly linked list or a doubly linked list to actually implement our stack or implement our queue because we know that an array list, it can add and remove from the beginning or add and remove from the end. And as long as the structure can add and remove from one or both ends, 
it can do uh, a, be a stack or be a queue. But one of these might be a better choice for the stack versus for the queue. So uh, I would like for you to work with your neighbors that if we had our say the push method of our stack, and let's say the stack is holding integers, and so we want to push something onto our stack, if we want to pop something off of our stack, if we want to something to our queue or remove something from the queue. The question is both for our stack, should we be keeping these integers in an array list, singly linked list, or doubly linked list? And then based on that choice, what would we what operation on whatever data structure we choose would we use to implement push and pop? So for example, if I said, oh, we have an array list, and I'd say maybe the end of the array list is the top of the stack, then I might say my, maybe I call my internal variable data, and I use the array lists add operation, or maybe add last, I think that's up there, yes, add last of val. So I'd say data my data, I'm going to use an array list to do this, and I'd use the add last method to do push. This is the, the, the task, so work with the folks around you to choose one of these three structures to use for the stack, to use for the queue, and try and fill in what these methods would be. Uh, Quok and I will be around to answer questions. Okay, I, I, I just All right, we're, we're about out of time. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the, the notes for today go through kind of all the different combinations of how we could implement a stack using an array, array list, link list, how we could implement a queue using an array list or a link list, uh, discusses the, the trade-offs there. Uh, last term, uh, uh, I want to throw at you, if we want a queue that it ha we can add and remove from the beginning and add and remove from the end. That is a doubly en double ended queue. A double ended queue that gets shortened to D -ek, which is pronounced deck often. And Java has something called an array deck, which is what they suggest you use. Uh, if you need stack behavior. All right, that'll do it for this week. Happy Friday. Uh, keep working on the lab, and I'll see you Monday. Uh, look for an announcement about uh, Sunday's prefect session. Yeah, I'll be in person there. There's going to be cookies of some sort. Oh. Yeah.